The seven star terror event for Chestnut is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We already covered one of the best builds in Appleton for beating this raid, but we've got three more builds for you to feature in today's video. Now on the back of the Appleton video, there was a number of comments saying how it wasn't the most accessible Pokemon to get. Now one of the things I like doing in these best build videos is to make sure that the Pokemon that we're using most of the time are really accessible to you all. So you're going to have an easy time to catch the Pokemon, train it up and then take it into these raids to either catch the Pokemon or just farm it for the high item cost. Now of course the first phase of this Terror Raid event will be running from the 12th of May until the 14th and returning for its second phase on the 19th till the 20th. 21st of May. If you want a breakdown of all the details for the Terror Raid event itself, do check out the Appleton video that we put up. It covers everything that you're going to need to know about this new 7 star Terror Raid. Now the builds that we're going to feature in today's video are all going to be linked in the description so you can check those out in your own time. Of course we have the Appleton that we've already covered in a previous video but if you want to get yourself an Appleton if it is a bit difficult for you to get we do have a shiny hunting video for Appleton on the channel. You can check this out. I'll link it in the top right hand corner for you even if you don't hunt the shiny it is a really easy way for you to get one in your game so then you can train it up and take it into these raids so the first pokemon that we're going to feature is the lorantis lorantis is a pokemon that you've used in previous seven star terror raid events and it is coming back for this one we have got the item the shell bell make sure that it's terror typing is grass and then a move set of synthesis sunny day solar beam and a leaf zone the most important thing for this set is going to be that contra ability so anytime you take attack drops or defense drops it will actually give you attack boosts and defense boosts so when you use something like leaf storm that drops your special attack by two stages it'll actually boost your special attack by two stages so essentially kind of setting you up while you're attacking making you stronger every turn that's the premise of this you want to just go into the raid and you're going to just use leaf storm over and over and over again until the one turn where you do see the chest note nullify your stats and abilities now don't use leaf storm this turn make sure on that turn you use something like synthesis you could set up the sun as well for a solar beam later on in the match once that turn is ended though your ability will be intact again and then you can use the leaf storms to boost your attacks up it's likely chestnut will nullify your abilities and your stats twice through this entire raid but you're going to be able to just use the leaf storm like eight leaf storms is going to be enough to beat this chestnut pretty easily and you don't really have to worry about getting knocked out because of the ev spread on this lorantis we have got 252 hp 252 special attack you could go a bit more in depth and go for the 252 in defense just to make sure you take those physical attacks a little bit better but 252 hp is super fine with a modest nature on it so that is the lorantis a really solid build and up there with the appleton and a very quick way to get rid of the chestnut and farm it for those items the next pokemon we're going to feature is coriodon it is going to have the black belt held item that will give you a boost to fighting type attacks we're going to have the fighting terror type on there as well and a move set of sword stance screech bulk up and drain punch so the basic premise of this move set is going to be to screech three times because you're going to be able to get those off you probably don't want to go for the sword stances straight away you want to go for those drain punches maybe get a couple of drain punches off it'll set the shield up it'll nullify your stats and abilities on your side of the field after that you're going to be free to go for those sword stances so then just get three swords dances up you max out your attack and then start using those drain punches to cut through if it does nullify your stats and abilities again just go for another three swords dances and by that point you'll be able to terrestrialize and you're going to make easy quick work of this chest note with the coriodon the ev spread that we've got on this just so you're able to take attacks a little bit better and maximize that offensive pressure is 252 in attack and then 252 in defense with an adamant nature so that is the on there with the black belt you can swap that out for an expert belt if it's easier but the black belt and the expert belt kind of give you the same thing and the final pokemon that we're going to feature in today's video is going to be meow scarada now it is a grass and dark typing so it is going to be weak to that hammer arm that the chestnut does have access to but we do have a way around that and kind of nullifying that straight away into the battle make sure that your terror typing is grass 
and we are having the held item of the expert belt. The moveset is going to be Fake Tears, Nasty Plot, Charm and Giga Drain. We have the protein ability on this Miascarada. Now that is quite important. It's not necessary. You don't need it, but it does make it a bit easier. And then we have an EV spread of 252 special attack, 252 defense, the rest put in HP and then a modest nature as well. So the Miascarada, a really quick one to do this raid with. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go in and I'll show you exactly Exactly how we can do it with this Miascarada and the way that you can set this up. So I've given you a number of options in this video today because I do feel like I want to kind of make it more accessible uh, to everyone so they've got a nice number of options that they can pick from so they can go out and farm these raids because they're so good for level up candies, for terror shards and those high cost items that you can just sell after you've beat the raid. So if you do the raid over and over and over again, it does allow you to kind of acquire a lot of really good items that are useful for future builds and things like that and anything that you want to do in the game. So turn one, we come into the raid, of course. We know that the chestnut is going to set up the iron defense turn one. That's super fine. The first thing that we want to do with the Miascarada, because like I've mentioned, it has got that part dark typing, so it is going to be weak to the hammer arms. We want to get rid of that dark typing. So that's why for turn one, we tick down a kind of turn on our turns before we can terrestrialize, but we go for that Giga Drain just to give us that pure grass typing. That's going to make it a little bit easier to go into the rest of this raid. And you can see the hammer arm does come out. It does do a good considerable amount of damage but the next turn we're in a good spot where we can just go for these charms and charm reduces the attack stat on the chestnut by two stages every time you use it so you want to use three of these and that'll be the attack stat of the chestnut for the remainder of this battle it might use a bulk up uh, at some point throughout the battle but i mean it's going to just take it from minus five uh, minus six to minus five so you don't really need to worry about that too much and if you've got a partner that has got something like intimidate and you've got an object Bolivia as well it really does speed up the process of this whole battle as well we get pretty lucky here where it is paralyzed but I mean we'll see probably this turn how much the hammer arm is going to do after it is minus six stone edge is one thing to watch out for of course as well because it does have that high crit rate but as long as it doesn't crit you're not too worried now after you've got the charms off you want to go for those fake tears so that'll reduce the special defense on the chest snort by two stages so you want to use three of those get those off before the shield goes up if you're in a point where your health is like pretty low or you need some health back at all at any point you can always go for the giga drain but try and get your your fake tears off before you do any of that because once you do a good considerable amount of damage to the chestnut in this raid it will uh, it will put the shield up and then you'll not be able to use the fake tears anymore now you see we do get a little bit unfortunate there with the critical hit from the stone edge which is a bit unfortunate but we have managed to get at least two a fake tears off so it is going to be minus four special defense so not ideal but it doesn't matter we do see the stat nullified and abilities uh, screen pop up there so we know we're safe to go for those nasty plots now we enter the field so the first thing again when you come back onto the field is you're going to want to activate that protein ability so because we've got that dog typing back so don't forget about that it is charmed so it isn't going to be doing too much damage but that is the one thing that you want to do if you do get knocked out make sure that you do activate that protein ability and by doing it as well like i said is just ticking down the turns until you can terrestrialize as well so um that is a big thing just to keep in mind when you're going into these raids see the hammer arm is doing like literally nothing there so now we're in a good spot we can just start going for those nasty plots and like i say you want to get three of these nasty plots up and maximize your attack stat the chest not not in a good position right now to really threaten you at all and the time is still in the pretty healthy space uh, if you didn't get that critical hit with the stone edge we would have been in a much better position the time would have been a lot healthier but it's not anything to really worry about too much right now and uh, after uh, one more Giga Drain will be able to terrestrialize and then we should be able to clean this up pretty quickly. And that is our third and final nasty plot. We might see the chestnut nullify abilities once more, but we should be able to get at least a couple of attacks off before it does anything. You can see how well we're taking the attacks after we kind of combine that with the charm. So this is just an alternative option for you if you don't have something like Lorantis or you don't have something like the Appleton. A lot of you may have chosen um, Meow Scarada as your starter Pokemon, so you'll be able to kind of utilize this pretty easily and make the build uh, to kind of come in and just rinse through the uh, the chestnut pretty easily in your game. Like I say, I think we've been a bit unfortunate with the chestnut and some of the RNG in this battle, but to be honest, 
we're sitting in a good spot right now so we can terrestrialize like i say and we're going to be able to kind of just beat this pretty easily and there we go let's see what the damage is like it should break the shield on this chestnut doing huge damage there so setting it up to get taken down the next turn and like i say the timer is in a really good position right now where we're not really in any worry at all we're all set up our stats do get nullified here which is a little bit of a shame but we can go for that fake tears once again and put it down to minus six and then just go for a giga drain and this is the final giga drain that we need and this should be enough and that is as easy as you can get with the meow scorada probably not as quick as the appleton or the lorantis but still such a good strategy to use going into this raid and the ability to kind of use that protein ability to take away your dark typing makes it pretty easily like if you go for the overgrow ability you're gonna have to worry about the hammer armor it's still gonna be super effective every time you use it until you do terrestrialize so just utilizing the protein that turn one with the giga drain it ticks down the time that you need before you can terrestrialize as well as getting rid of that weakness so it's a nice easy way to do it and if you're like me and you want to farm this raid for these high cost items after you've beat the raid because you'll have to wait 24 hours in game before another terror raid event will appear on your map you can skip this step by just getting one straight away by just coming into your map go to your whole menu then down into system settings then down into system date and time make sure you synchronize clock by the internet is off come down into date and time don't change anything here just click through like this click ok then come back into your home menu and back into the game and you'll see all your dens will respawn and you'll be able to kind of locate the seven star terror raid event again wherever it is there it is and just head over to it and just farm away until you've got as many of the items as you want that is everything for today's video friends thank you so much for tuning in i hope you found these additional builds useful if you have please drop a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of our pokemon scarlet and violet content and let me know what you've been using to take down this chestnut with in your games have fun with the event over the weekend if you're playing tears of the kingdom as well i hope you're enjoying the playthrough i'll be diving into mine very soon so have a great rest of your day friends take care of yourselves and bye bye